Caroline Clancy, I just want to start by thanking you um, on behalf of the Nuffield Trust and the Commonwealth Fund for, for giving us this interview. Oh, a pleasure. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the sort of quality measures that are going to be needed um, in the future. One of the uh, ambitions behind the Affordable Care Act, behind health reform in the United States, was to try and put healthcare on a more evidence-based footing. And I wondered what your assessment was of whether what kind of progress, whether there is progress being made and, and what kind of progress is being made. Yes, so first let me just say that one of the best kept secrets of the Affordable Care Act is just how many provisions there are in the bill about quality. Some of them are all about building up and adding to ongoing activity, particularly by our public payers, and some of them are about testing uh, new models of payment and delivery. But all of these efforts need tools and metrics to know if you're on the right track. So uh, a great deal of activity and progress, and my agency reports every year to the Congress on how we're doing in healthcare quality. And what we see is in acute care, um, we're now up to getting it right on average across the country about 80% of the time, which is much better than we were even a few years ago. And more particularly, we see for where there's public reporting, we see bigger increases in uh, performance improvements. So I think that's all a good sign. Where else we see evidence of evidence being uh, implemented in practice is the Affordable Care Act says for preventive services that are evidence-based, um, not only will they be covered, but patients don't have a co-payment, which is a very popular uh, sort of strategy here. But for those services, you don't have that. And already, that's affecting a large number of Americans. What about the more vexed question in the United States of, of clinical decisions about what treatments to use or what medicines to use having an evidence base? Is there any progress being made there? Well, one of the most exciting developments in evidence-based medicine is uh, what we're now calling patient-centered research. And the good news is uh, the U.S. Has, leaves a very big footprint globally in terms of biomedical innovation. And that's a great place to be because what it means is for many decisions, whether that's diagnostic or which treatment, including maybe just wait and see, uh, there's lots and lots of good choices. What there's not is the equivalent of a GPS that helps clinicians and patients figure out what's likely to be the best fit for this individual. So the research that we support and the tools that we produce from this research don't say option A is for you. What it says is here are the options and here's what we know. And sometimes based on existing evidence, we may not know a whole lot, at which point we don't make it up. We simply say, uh, the, for example, this newer procedure hasn't been studied extensively yet. But at least people have some sense of what are the pros and cons. And we invest quite a bit of time and effort and resources into making sure that the information for the public um, is accessible by people of a wide variety of literacy levels. Now you've mentioned that you've got good quality measures on acute care and there seems to be signs of progress in that area. Um, and the United States, in common with many other countries, is also pushing hard to try and get the quality of primary care and other settings where people with chronic conditions are looked after, particularly when they have to move from Absolutely. one place to another. Do you have the right quality measures to track people with chronic conditions over time? I think we have a lot of the right measures, um, which doesn't mean that we have the whole problem solved. One of the big puzzle pieces that's missing is actually uh, giving clinicians uh, feedback on how they're doing uh, in a very timely fashion. Uh, we see that in some parts of our system. So for example, in our veterans health system, which has long had a really well-developed electronic health record and so forth, clinicians actually get f feedback reports on a monthly basis. And those reports aren't just uh, a statement of how you're doing. What they say is the reason you didn't get a perfect score here is because of care of these individual patients. Click here if you'd like the nurse case manager to reach out to this patient and so forth. That's what we really need to have everywhere. Um, I get excited even thinking about it in VA because it really is not, not all of those pieces are together everywhere. 
So the measures are fine. The other piece I think that we need are, is better connection between care delivery, what goes on in a clinician's practice, and the community supports that people need to manage their disease. Um, the what to do, for example, for diabetes or high blood pressure, it's relatively straightforward, lots of good treatment options, the evidence is well established and it's not brand new. The harder part is actually living with the illness and managing it yourself and getting on with the rest of your life. For that, you often need supports in the community. It's very easy for me to say, you need to lose weight. Um, or if you lose weight, your disease will be much better off. Actually doing it, much harder. And that's where I think we need much better uh, connectivity, bi-directional, between uh, what goes on in care and what kinds of resources are available in a particular community to help patients and their families. Now the NHS, as you may be aware, is having a big push to try and improve quality and we're bringing in a new suite of um, quality measures, which we're calling the Outcomes Framework, and there's a lot of them. There's about 50 in one domain and there are more for public health and for social care. Do you have any observations from your experience of, of collecting and publishing quality information at a government level that might be of, of benefit to the NHS? Well, I think one uh, very important dimension of this whole discussion is sort of what level you're reporting at. So we've been doing this annual report on quality and a companion one on healthcare disparities for almost 10 years. We started in 2003 and we draw on many data sources. now. But that provides for the nation at a very high level a snapshot of how we're doing, a dashboard, if you will. Um, for me as a clinician in practice, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, so there has to be a connection back to what goes on at the front lines. And the one thing that we've seen from research, and I don't know how well this works in the NHS or anywhere else for that matter, but in the studies that we have supported about improvement, the big um, hits or the home runs have been in situations where clinicians and people providing care every day actually get information back in a very timely fashion. So one of the most successful efforts gave that back to hospital teams on a quarterly basis. That same group now thinks that is the bare minimum. More often would even be better. Because to get a report on how you were doing a year or two ago, I've gotten these reports. I, who knows what it means? But if you do give more frequent uh, information, people start to connect the dots between these new activities and strategies that they're trying and the goal that they're trying to achieve. And we've seen dramatic improvements, most notably in hospital-associated infections. Carolyn Clancy, thank you very much for talking to us.